Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture. We're going to study polar coordinates. So if you remember, we, we, we plotted the complex numbers on the 2D plane and the XY plane. We thought of complex numbers as X plus YI. Now it's also possible to think of a point in a 2D plane in terms of polar coordinates. How far is it from the origin and what is its angle? Now that we know angles, we can do this much, much better. So let's see uh, what polar coordinates are next, okay? So now, uh, if you have the xy plane and I have the point a comma b, I know it's a distance a horizontally from uh, origin and b vertically from the origin. Okay, so that's a comma b. So this is called a rectangular coordinate. Rectangular, okay, the spelling is wrong here. So this is the rectangular uh, coordinate system. Uh, you have a comma b, a point a comma b. Uh, it's a distance, horizontal distance a away from the origin, vertical distance b away from the origin. So you have a comma b. So that's how we de define it rectangularly. And this a comma b, so x, y plane is described as all a, b for which a is real minus infinity to infinity, b is real minus infinity to infinity. As I keep varying a, b, I go through all the points on the rectangular, in rectangular coordinates in the x, y plane. So it turns out you can also describe the same point by saying how far it is from the origin and what angle it makes from the x axis, right? But that is also a very equivalent way of describing the point. If to describe the point, I can say how far I have to go along the x-axis and how far I have to go along the y-axis. Or I can say at what angle I have to go and what distance I have to go. Both of these are exactly equivalent. And in this case, you can see very easily that r is equal to square root of a square plus b square. We know this. And you can also say that a is, if you want to go from r theta to a, b, uh, uh, you know, you see a is equal to r cos theta and b is equal to r sin theta, right? So this is another way in which this angle theta is very useful uh, to describe how far you have to go in what angle, okay? So that's called the polar view of the 2D plane. In that case, it's called the r theta plane, not the xy plane. Both of these are exactly the same. So in the r theta plane, I have pairs of uh, variables r comma theta instead of a, b, for instance, here in the xy plane. And this r will be only non-negative, zero to infinity, it'll go. So this, when you say r, it, it doesn't make sense to say minus r and all that. So you say only zero to infinity, and then theta, you let it go from 0 to 2 pi, okay? So the angle theta, you sweep fully, and then r, you keep as positive, okay? That's what you do in the polar coordinate system, okay? So, so any angle you can go, and then what distance you have to go, okay? This is equivalent way of doing it. So instead of having a, b, which both go to minus infinity, infinity, I have here r, which goes from 0 to infinity, and theta is only from 0 to 2 pi, okay? So this is an equivalent way of describing uh, the polar, uh, the 2D plane, in the polar coordinates. So these are called polar coordinates, these are called rectangular coordinates, okay? So you can see here, given polar coordinates r theta, you can go to rectangular coordinates very easily, right? So this formula gives you that a equals r cos theta, b equals r sin theta. How do you do the other way around? Given rectangular coordinates, how do you go to the polar coordinates, okay? So r is easy, root of a square plus b square. What about theta? How do you describe theta? Okay, so we need some additional notation for that. So for that, it turns out, it's good to define inverse of the sine and cos function, okay? Suppose I tell you sine and cos, how do you find it's inverse? Now, uh, inverting a function, right? Inverse exists only when, you know, <coughs> the function is one to one, you know? If you take a, if you take a line along the y-axis, it should hit that uh, function curve in only one point. If it hits it in more than one point, what do you invert to? You don't know what to invert to. Like for instance, what is the problem in defining cos inverse? If I take this point, let's say some point 0.7 or something, and if I draw a parallel line here, right, horizontal line, it's hitting cos as two points. So if I say cos inverse, do I say this point or this point? Okay, I don't know, right? So that, that makes it uh, non-invertible in some sense, right? So it, it becomes a many to one type function, so you cannot invert it. So the trick that we use is to restrict the domain of x, okay? So if you see f of x equal to sine x, and if you restrict the domain to minus pi by two, to plus pi by two, <coughs> okay? So I won't look at x outside of minus pi by two to pi by two. I will only look at x between minus pi by two and pi by two. If I do that, then you see that problem is not there, okay? Sine x is monotonically increasing in that interval and uh, there is no, uh, you know, it doesn't come back in that interval. So it, there is no problem with this non-invertibility, okay? So it becomes invertible and this f of x sine x lies between minus one and one, between minus pi by two and pi by two. So here I can define an inverse, okay? So I'll define sine inverse 
as being a function which goes from minus 1 1 to minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 and it is defined as the inverse of this function between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. So, for me my sin inverse will only be between minus pi by 2 and pi by 2. It would not take values on the other side. Okay? So, then I can keep it invertible. If I have to go there I can have to do some changes etc. Okay? So, that is all. So, that is the thing to keep in mind. I can do the same sort of trick for cos. If I define a function g to be cos x, I can restrict the interval to 0 to pi. If I do 0 to pi, you see that cos is monotonically decreasing and so it becomes invertible, right? So, it is just 1 to 1 in that range. Okay, so, 0 to pi is very important. So, I will define cos inverse as being minus 1 to 1 to 0 pi. Okay, it is defined as the inverse of uh, this function. Okay, so, hope you see this. This is just a restriction of the domain to make the function uh, become invertible. So, we define sin inverse and cos inverse in this fashion. So, I give you a value of sin x, I can tell you what x will be as the inverse of this function. Okay? Now, uh, this is all sorts of confusion in your mind, I am sure you have. Whenever we defined a function, the first thing we spoke about was being able to compute it. Okay? So, right now, I have just defined it in terms of geometry. So, maybe you can construct it if you want an angle theta, you take a protractor, you know, you have computed and then you draw the line and then you can, you can measure it like that. Uh, but then the protractor will may not have good accuracy. So, how accurately can you compute sin cos is still a bit iffy. I have not told you how to do that, right? So, we will we'll look at it later, how to compute sin cos accurately. But then at least, you know, it is a well-defined function, it is just geometric. So, intuitively, hopefully you see that all of these are uh, clear enough. So, assuming you can compute sin x cos x, uh, even the inverse are easy to compute. So, so, you know what the value of the inverse is, okay? All right. So, let me summarize rectangular to polar conversion. R theta to A B is very easy. A is R, R, R cos theta, B is R sin theta. It is very, very easy. Now, R theta to A B also is quite easy. R is root of A square plus B square. Now, theta, there is this uh, thing about whether B is positive or not. If B is positive, then I know my theta is going to be okay. I can define, you know, theta will be between 0 and pi, right? If B is positive, theta is between 0 and pi. I can work with the cos inverse very, very nicely. So, I have cos inverse of A by R, right? Uh, and then for B is greater than or equal to 0. On the other hand, if B is less than 0, my theta is going to go from 0 to minus pi, right? Minus pi to 0. So, that ends up being minus cos inverse of A by R. So, you can see clearly for the same A, if B is negative, right? B is on this side, then theta is minus of cos A by R, right? So, that is all. It is as simple as that. So, that way, I keep my cos inverse as being minus 1 to 1 to 0 pi and then when I know this B is negative, I adjust my cos inverse with this minus sign so that I get the correct answer. Okay, so that is uh, easy enough uh, thing to do. I hope you see that. Uh, anyway, cos is uh, even, right? Whether it is positive, the theta is positive or negative, you get the same cos and that positive negativity uh, is decided by uh, the sign of B. Okay, I hope you see that. Uh, that is the easy thing. So, all of these you might have known before is just uh, formally writing it down in clear things. Okay, so uh, coming back to uh, this problem slide, this is a very standard problem. I have given you a rectangular coordinate thing, I want you to convert to polar, I have given you a polar coordinate uh, convert to rectangular. It is just very, very simple. I am not going to go into detail. I hope you have seen these kind of problems before. Okay, so that is an introduction to polar coordinates. Uh, thank you very much.